Good morning, degenerates, and welcome to another episode of Boring Crypto IO, the place where I read you the boring crypto news every morning, Monday through Friday, just so you don't have to. My name is not important, and I'm your host, L F G. Finance market share drops on CFTC suit and no fee trading halt. Again, Binance, BNB, Bitcoin, Tumble after crypto Twitter personality, Kobe's wild guess. Guys trying to track down what's going on with Binance, gathering as much information as possible. <laughs> Elon Musk changes Twitter icon to Doge after seeking lawsuit dismissal. Unlocking mass adoption, the importance of user-friendly crypto wallets. I chose this article because I've been saying for quite some time, whoever turns the cumbersome activity of onboarding, offboarding, holding, saving, swapping, etc. of crypto. Whoever figures that out, makes it easy, will win. And last but not least, Ripple lawsuit by SEC influenced by JP Morgan. Let's go to the markets. Market sitting at $1.181 trillion. Bitcoin dominant sitting at 46.2%. ETH up to 187 and a whopping 21 GUE will get you an ETH transaction. Bitcoin sideways AF, 5% on the week, not doing much on the day. ETH starting to move just a little bit. Got a 3% pump on the day, 7.5 for the week. Outside of that, we've got Dogecoin. So apparently yesterday, and I, I hopefully this article will give us a reason why, because I haven't done any research on why it may have happened, but Elon changed the um, the Twitter logo to uh, the Doge Dog, and people went absolutely ham. Um, I look, I'm not a fan of meme coins at all. I think they're pointless, I, and and I I can get pushed back on that all day long. I don't care. Um, it, with with projects out there that are literally world changing that, that could literally change the face of the world and, and have all such like all sorts of potential um uh insane intelligent smart brains working on the projects to to create use case etc etc uh that could pump humans default to meme tokens so i'm not a fan but whatever, we'll play your game, Elon. I'll throw stupid money at it, or a little bit of stupid money. And by so stupid, I don't mean a lot. I mean like bullshit money that I don't care about. But whatever. That's so Doge pumped. We're gonna try and find out why. Uh, Cardano, 13% on the week. Not doing much today. And yeah, nothing crazy going on. Let's go to Bitcoin. Super, super sideways. We're creating a bit of a triangle right here. Let's go ahead and draw that out while you guys are uh, here watching. Boop, boop. Either this can be a triangle right here, which makes sense to me, or it was a triangle and we're breaking out. All right. Something along those lines, but I don't like that. Let's go ahead and put this right there. And we just had a little bit of a movement too, nothing crazy, but um, yeah. Uh, let me finish this out. Something possibly like this, maybe, maybe not. Oh, this is a little too crazy. Something like right there. Swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high. Decision time is coming. Um, but yeah, what we've been doing, this isn't a four hour, just in case you guys don't know. Uh, we've been just ranging. And I said this yesterday. Uh, what is interesting, this 27310, which is actually a buy order of mine, um, seems to be good support. We dipped down and hit it yesterday on the four hour, it came back up. Making even more support is this 27593. Let's just call it 276 for shits and gigs. Support. Support, 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 support. Um, good levels of strength, right? Um, so anywhere from this 27.3 to 27.6, 
it's a good range of support keep your eye on it any kind of there's a retracement if you're playing swings it's it's not a bad idea to put in longs outside of that we've got our nasty basically 29 level that is insane resistance um, as well as this trend line forming as resistance keep an eye on that guys this new trend line that I just drew with this triangle um, with these triangles Bitcoin is either going to make a decision and break out or it's going to make a decision and reverse um, again just keep your eye on it. Uh, watching it on the four hour, if it does break out any direction um, to validate it, look for either a retest and then another move in the same direction, or for four hour close, or for four hour candles to close outside of uh, the pattern in whatever direction it decides to go. At that point, we have uh, made a different trend. So Ethereum, Ethereum broke out just now. Um, let's go to the one hour here. We found through the timelines. Uh, we have been flirting with this $1,800 level uh, for quite some time. Up and down, up and down, up and down, in and out. Um, and we're getting a good breakout right now. Let's see if it holds. Because um, it hasn't. Again, breakout here didn't hold. Here didn't hold. Here did not hold. And now we're getting a substantial one. The highest one we've seen in quite some time. Um, Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the ninth time we've broken out of this $1,800 level. Let's see what it's going to do. So that's on the one hour. Looks like the smaller time frames too. Let's go to the 15. Five. Five setting up a potential flag. Keep your eye on that for another move. Uh, to the upside potentially um, if you are playing scalps not a bad idea oh uh, back to the four hour all right so i want to see a four hour candle close or a couple of them close be, uh, high, uh, above this level before i get bullish on if it's gonna hold or not xrp still in this uh downward trend this um uh descending channel um, potentially could break to the upside um, if you are watching this and playing this again guys simple trading techniques nothing crazy again this isn't a trading channel this is a financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and i'm a shitty trader you probably shouldn't even pay attention to me but if you are looking at this this is what i'm looking at uh again swings if you're playing them these aren't huge swings um i mean yeah not wouldn't be my my cup of tea but two potential playouts we turn this uh 49 3 into support and then start ranging higher or we continue to range until we break out of the trend line um, just like on the triangle we were showing you uh, for bitcoin and whatnot keep an eye on that that's four hour daily cardano is still in this ascending channel which technically is bearish Potential, well, I I almost think that at this point with this giant channel, um, this uh, inverse cup and handle is kind of null and void. But I would keep an eye on this channel. Again, playing swing high, swing low, swing high, swing lows. If you're swing trading, um, do not do not long um, or uh, God, I lost my train of thought. Uh, anyways, um, got a lot going on today, guys. Uh, anyways, I, I these are potentially bearish. Could break to the downside. The chances of that are stronger with these channels. So trade cautiously, trade conservatively, stop losses, etc., etc. Let's get on to the news. Finance market shares drop on CFTC suit and no fee trading halt. Finance market dominance fell largely due to its decision to end zero fee trading or some trading pairs and not the Commodity Future Trading Commission's lawsuit. Uh, says blockchain analytics platform, Kaiko. The dominance, cryptocur the dominance of cryptocurrency exchange Binance in trading volume market share has slipped over the past two weeks following a lawsuit from the United States Commodities Regulator and its decision to halt some zero fee trading. In an April 4th newsletter, blockchain analytics platform Kaiko reported that Binance lost 16% of market share uh, of trade volume 
uh, with its market share at 54% as of the end of Q1. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission sued Binance on March 27th, alleging it flouted regulatory compliance, compliance and violated derivatives laws by offering trading to U.S. customers without registering with market regulators. Keiko said Binance still talks or takes in more volume than the rest of the combined competitors, but its March 15th decision to end zero fee spot and margin trading for 13 trading pairs, including BNB, Bitcoin, and ETH with multiple fiat currencies and stable coins led to a loss in trading volume. Overall, Binance's excess volume largely vanished with the end of zero fee trading, which was reflected in an even dispersal in market share among the remaining exchanges, Keiko reported. Keiko explained part of this fall was elevated by the U.S. arm Binance U.S., which managed to triple its market share over a quarter from 8% to 24%. Binance didn't fall excessively in every domain, though the exchange managed to largely maintain its derivative dominance by only giving up 2% market share over the last quarter. Keiko explained that the fall in trading volume figures was influenced mostly by the end of zero fee spot trading as opposed to the CFTC lawsuit. The, trending, the trend is quite different when looking at uh, derivative volume, derivatives volume. Binance only lost about 2% of market share for per perpetual futures trading trade volume. Get the words out. This suggests that the majority of market share was lost purely due to the end of zero fee spot trading rather than trepidatious additions around a lawsuit. The market share uh, fall to 54% comes after Binance was one of the big winners of the FTX fiasco, which saw its market share in trading volume rise 65% during the last quarter of 2022. Binance's market share increased from 50% to 65% after November 22, while OKX saw its market share increase from under 10% to 17%. Bybit and the three smaller exchanges, Huobi, BitMEX, and Deribit, Deribit? Never even heard of that exchange. On the other hand, saw their market share decline. Over the last quarter, Upbit was the only crypto exchange to reclaim that reclaimed a significant share in trading volume of the 17 trading platforms that Kaiko analyzed. Uh, in light of recent regulatory pressures by the banking crisis and the catastrophic collapse of FTX, many reports have observed a growing trend towards decentralized alternatives and self-custody wallets, you think? Bitcoin and ETH left centralized exchanges in record numbers following the fall of FTX. The daily trading volume of decentralized perpetual exchanges also reached 5 billion in November of 2022, the most since Terra Luna Classic Lunk, uh, and its connected Terra Classic USD USTC stablecoin collapse in May of 2022. Wow, it's already been a year. Uh, trading volumes on decentralized exchange Uniswap are now rivaling that of crypto exchanges Coinbase and OKX, but are still only a fraction of that process by Binance. All right, more Binance FUD. At Kobe's encrypted message read, Interpol red notice for Binance CEO after someone cracked the code. The post spooked markets even though it was just a rumor. Binance's BNB token and Bitcoin plunged Monday as a rumor spread that the crypto exchange CEO faced an international loss, law enforcement request to detain him. Turns out, the catalyst for all of this was an encrypted message contained in a tweet that was apparently not meant for public's eyes, at least not yet, and that might have just been a wild guess. Interpol Red Notice for CZ uh, read the tweet from at Kobe, uh, who is well followed by the crypto community. Not only is that account private, the text uh, of the message was actually a garble of letters and numbers. It had been encrypted using some type of hash uh the same cryptography that secures many cryptocurrencies including bitcoin uh but somebody figured out how to crack this post and the word spread with binance and its ceo cz having just been sued by u.s regulators for willful evasion of u.s laws the idea that cz might face a criminal probe ranged uh true to many and pre might face a criminal probe range rang i'm an idiot Pro ring true to many, and prices reacted accordingly as the rumor spread quickly. Binance's exchange token and Bitcoin rapidly dropped, um, which we did get a little bit of a dump yesterday. I guess this is the code. 
people hacked it, etc., etc. Spokespeople for Binance and Interpol didn't respond to a request for comment. On Twitter, Binance Chief Strategy Officer Patrick Hillman said regarding the rumor that one of two things is true. One, it's bullish. Bullish? Bu or bullshit. <laughs> I'm such a traitor. Bullish? One, it's bullshit. Two, a law enforcement agent is legally leaking elements of case of a case file. He added, my best bet is number one. So on and so forth. That's his tweet. Later Monday, Kobe said via Twitter that they posted the encrypted tweet after hearing a rumor. Effectively, Kobe was creating a record of something that they could reveal later they knew uh, in advance, provided, provided it came true. The person could also just quietly delete the tweet and nobody would be the wiser uh, that it was wrong. The point of the hash uh, commitment scheme is nobody is supposed to be able to read them until after the secret is revealed, Kobe tweeted. Looks like someone I discussed the rumor with, a handful of possible people, leaked the seed to create a stir at my expense, removing the context of the rumor, etc. Kobe added, anyway, it's not supposed to be readable ever unless, it's reve unless I revealed it, so sorry about that. Well, once again, narrow down a list of people I can trust. Since tweeting only leads to bad things instead of good things, I will probably do much less in the future. And there's his tweet. Go follow him if you want to read it. Yeah, more FUD for Binance. We'll see what happens. Moving on. In case you missed the fiasco yesterday with Dogecoin. Elon Musk changes Twitter icon to Doge after seeking lawsuit dismissal. Dogecoin surged more than 20% in about an hour after Twitter changed its icon, like the main logo, to a picture of the meme coins Shiba Inu. On April 3rd, social media giant Twitter changed its icon to that of the symbol of the popular meme token Dogecoin. Right there. Boop, 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 doo. I don't even know if it's still a thing. Let's see if it is. Yep, right there. Still a Dogecoin. That's funny. All right, moving on. Dogecoin is up sharply in light of the news with its price surging by more than 22% in an hour to uh, nine cents, a little over nine cents. Uh, the icon change took place uh, platform wide and is directly visible by the social media giants estimated 360 million monthly active users and visitors to the platform alike. Shortly after the icon changed, the Twitter and Tesla CEO tweeted the following meme, which appears to imply that the change will be around for some time. That's an old photo. Oh man, he likes, dude, look, however you feel about Elon, I, 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 there's pros and cons about the dude, but he likes to manipulate markets, that's for damn sure. Two days earlier, Elon Musk had a United States judge dismiss a $258 billion lawsuit filed by investors alleging the operation of a pyramid scheme to promote Dogecoin. Musk lawyers reportedly argued that funny pictures and tweeting words of support do not amount to a fraud claim. Uh, it appears that the reason behind the change can be attributed in part to a conversation with the administrator of the popular Wall Street Bet subreddit on Twitter. Change the bird logo to a Doge, said the Wall Street, Bates, Wall Street Bets chairman. LOL, that would be sick. As promised. And he did it. On January 18th, Cointelegraph reported that Dogecoin's carbon emissions fell by 25% following collaboration between network developers and Musk, work with Doge devs to improve system transaction efficiency. Potentially promising, he tweeted. Multiple market studies in the past have suggested that Mo Musk tweeted about Doge trends tends to drive the price higher. Absolutely. Throughout 2021, Musk promoted the cryptocurrency with slogans such as Dogecoin is the people's crypto and proclaimed himself to be a Doge father. Last year, Tesla launched a new series of whistles inspired by the Cybertruck series. Uh, each whistle was priced at a thousand Doge or 60 bucks at the time of announcement. Fellow American billionaire Mark Cuban has also praised Dogecoin claiming that it could be used to solve Twitter's spam problem. I don't know, man. Let me know if you what do you guys think about Doge. I'm not a, I'm not a meme coin fan. I don't I, I don't like trying to pump them. I don't like trying to promote them. I literally think I have maybe three hundred dollars worth of meme coins in my portfolio. 
Last but not least, Ripple lawsuit by SEC influenced by JP Morgan, question mark. Uh, FOIA request further delayed. A member of the XRP community filed a Freedom of Information Act FOIA request back in early August of 2022 regarding communication between the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission and banking giant J.P. Morgan involving Ripple Lab and XRP. In a new update, Ashley Prosper, nice last name, shared the, that the request continues to be delayed. Absolutely. Uh, Prosper is seeking disclosure from any SEC communications with JP Morgan about Ripple and or XRP. The current response letter states that the SEC has recently received the search results and is now reviewing them. Uh, apparently, there's a large number of records that require confidential treatment. The agency email reads, based on our initial review of the records, it appears that a large portion of the records will be required that we engage in the CT substantiation process, which involves records for which confidential treatment was requested. At the time of their submission, engaging in this type of consultation will add approximately 60 days to review. Of course, they're going to block out all the stuff that would get them in trouble or cause them to lose their case. Did JP Morgan influence the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple? Prosser said he filed the FOIA request because communication between SEC and JP Morgan directly led to the December 2020 lawsuit against the Ripple Labs company. It was prompted by an article on a blog called the Blue Sky Blog that discussed CEO donations related to SEC enforcement. Uh, a very compelling read. So how does Jamie Dimon and JP donate to the SEC? My next FOIA Prosper wrote at the time, uh, further detailing that the lawsuit harmed thousands of XRP holders to the tune of billions of dollars. Exactly. Uh, the SEC communications are of great public interest, according to Prosper, as Judge Sarah Netburn and Judge Annalisa Torres also noted in a different context. That's why the XRP Army member is demanding the information be released without charge so the public can better understand how private companies influence the SEC and its staff, which is funny because I say this all the time. Is it the SEC put in place to supposedly quote unquote protect investors? Right. Until recently, Prosper assumed that the release of documents related to JP Morgan Ripple and XRP could occur in late March, possibly because District Judge Annalise Torres has not yet issued a ruling, but documents appear to be protected under confidentiality. A release appears to be 60 days away at the earliest, according to the latest response from the agency. By that time, Judge Torres might have already issued a ruling, at least at the at, at least that that is the assumption of some lawyers from the XRP community, such as John E. Deaton and James Fillon. Both are expecting a ruling to come by the end of the month. However, the chance of success of the FOIA requests are difficult to assess. Another XRP uh, community member wrote that there is a trend with the SEC. They, they won't release anything they don't want to until they get sued and the court forces them to. Absolutely. Uh, remarkably, Ripple filed a FOIA uh, request at the very beginning of the litigation. Additionally, in August of 2021, the government watchdog group Empower Oversight filed an extensive FOIA request for access to internal SEC documents and records involving Jay Clayton, William Hinman, and Mark Berger for possible conflicts of interest during their tenure. At press time, the XRP price was trading at 49.57. Uh, still consolidating after the stellar rally from late March. Yeah, man. Um, all this stuff coming out, all the the secrecy, uh, I've been saying for a long time, the SEC is literally slitting their own throat with this. And it all looks bad. Let me know what you think. Comment down below. Let's look at Bitcoin one last time before we get out of here. And yeah, we're stuck on stupid <laughs> inside of the triangle. Outside of that, guys, eh, let's look at Dogecoin one last time. Hold on. Just for fun. What's the chart look like? We are sitting right at 10 cents, y'all. Um, just barely under it. Um, that's, that's bullish for, for Doge. I mean, after the pump, the highest it went to was just a little over 10. 
Yeah. So I mean, we haven't we haven't retraced too much. I mean, look at that. Jesus. That is a wall of buy. That is insanity. Could Dogecoin and Elon be what kicks off the next bull cycle? Only time will tell y'all. We shall see. All right. Outside of that, if you do enjoy the content I provide here on Boring Crypto IO, please, by all means, subscribe to the channel, y'all. Turn on your bell for notifications so you know what, when I do post a video. Watch, like, and possibly share the videos if you like them. Outside of that, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. I'm out of here.